Hello, welcome back. Today we're making my Oreo Surprise Chocolate Chip and Pecan Cookies. I'm going to start with one stick of room temperature butter. And then we're going to also use one stick of um, shortening. I use butter flavor shortening for the most part, but I didn't have quite enough, so I added some regular shortening as well. Either way, it works out fine. I'm just going to blend those together on low speed just to get them incorporated before we start adding anything else to it. So put my mixer on low and I moved it up to about a medium just to get those um, two ingredients mixed together. And then I'm gonna add in two cups of brown sugar. Now I added dark brown sugar because that's all I had, but light brown sugar is technically what you're supposed to use in this recipe. These came out great, so sounds like either way you're fine. Two cups of firmly packed brown sugar. I'm going to turn my mixer up a bit. And then I'm going to go ahead and um, scrape down the bowl um, just to get all of that shortening and butter off the side of the bowl because I want to make sure everything gets mixed in correctly, mixed in well. So I'm going to go ahead and scrape down the bowl for at the very beginning all the sides as well as the bottom. Okay, then I'm gonna put that back on the mixer on a medium high speed and we're gonna let that um, get nice and fluffy. So I'm gonna move that over to the side and while it's going, I'm gonna get our egg mixture together. Our egg mixture is just two eggs um, and also our evaporated milk and our flavorings. Um, I used a really small container. I wish it was a bigger container. So I'll use something a little bit bigger. So to our two eggs, we're going to add in, I'm adding in one full teaspoon of, tablespoon, sorry, of vanilla. And then we're going to add in about a teaspoon and a half of butter, butter vanilla emulsion. And I'm also going to add in one teaspoon of cookie butter emulsion. Overall, you want to make sure you add two tablespoons of vanilla flavoring or, or whatever flavoring you want for your cookies. I just added those three together and it was almost two tablespoons, but two tablespoons is actually what the recipe calls for. So I've added the emulsion, the extract, and I'm going to add in my evaporated milk. Now you're going to add in th three to four tablespoons of evaporated milk. In this recipe, I added in three because the last time I made these cookies, I did four and I felt like the batter was just a little bit too loose. So I'm only adding in three this time. So three to four it really just depends on how all of your ingredients are coming together. And then we're just going to mix that well. That's our two eggs, all of our extracts to equal about two tablespoons of, of flavor. And then our three or four tablespoons of evaporated milk. Yes, you can also use regular whole milk this recipe as well or even soy milk to be honest so we're gonna mix that well and this is where I was wishing I had a larger container so I could have mixed this better um, but there we go got that incorporated pushing it off to the side so I can move on to the next ingredient. this is my flour mixture and here I have sifted four cups of all-purpose flour two tablespoons of powdered butter um, two teaspoons of salt and one and a half teaspoons of baking soda. That is my flour mixture sifted. All right, so we're going to move our um, brown sugar and uh, butter, uh, butter and shortening mixture back. Turn that down onto the lowest speed so I can now add in all of my flour mixture. I just like doing it one tablespoon or one large spoon at a time because I don't want flour to go everywhere. So I just gradually add it in. And like I said, this mixer is on the lowest speed for my KitchenAid. That's a stir setting. Okay, get all the rest of that dumped in there. And now we're ready to add in our egg mixture. 
Um, instead of using this bowl, I'm just going to put it into a measuring cup with a spout to make it easier to control as I'm pouring it into uh, the flour and uh, brown sugar mixture. Probably the cup I should have had it in the beginning. But anyway, here we are. So I'm going to slowly add that into my um, flour mixture. Here we go. I've got it all mixed in. Making sure not to leave any behind. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and turn off my mixer and scrape down the sides. I don't want to over mix at this point because we already have our flour and our egg mixture in there. So I only let it mix for a few seconds so that I can scrape down the bowl and then put it back on the mixer for a few more seconds. Make sure you get all the way down at the bottom. That's usually where my mixtures uh, tend to clump. So make sure you get the very bottom of your bowl. All right, now that we've got that all scraped down, I'm gonna put it uh, back on the mixer and we're only gonna mix it for a few more seconds um, on the next to lowest setting. So that wasn't very long, like I said, just a few seconds. And now we are going to take our mixture off because it is done. Anything else we add to it, we will hand mix in. So this is where I'm just gonna take the mixer off the, um, or take the bowl off the mixer and get everything off of my paddle attachment, which seems like it takes forever. Eventually, I said, this is taking too long. So I'm gonna pause it in just a moment so that I can get all the rest of the batter off of my paddle attachment without making you all suffer through watching it. All right, we're back. And now I'm gonna add in one cup of milk chocolate, chocolate chips. I'm using the Ghirardelli brand. You can literally use any type of chocolate chips, any brand, any variety you'd like, dark chocolate, milk chocolate, semi-sweet chocolate, but you only need about a cup in this recipe. And I'm also adding in one cup of chopped pecans. I probably should have toasted these, but I totally forgot. So in they go, straight from the bag. And then we're just gonna hand mix those together. Hold the bowl, girl. All right, now I've got it. We're gonna mix all of that together, making sure we get the very bottom of our bowl and just get those mixed in. Shouldn't take too long. As you can see, the dough is very thick, but it's also very pliable. And that lets you know that you've got a perfect cookie dough. So I've scraped all the way down to the bottom. I scraped all the sides and ta-da, our cookie dough is ready. All right, so I have a parchment paper lined cookie sheet um, and I also have my toppings. So you always wanna top your cookies before you bake them and makes them look better. This is just additional helping of chocolate chips and um, chopped pecans. I'm using a four ounce cookie scoop. Yes, it's big, that's how I like it. I have a four ounce cookie scoop and if you didn't want to put anything in the middle you can just roll it and add it add your toppings put them on your cookie sheet but i forgot i'm, I'm my surprise oreo cookie so i'm going to have to take that ball take it in half and then i'm going to add in the middle of them one whole oreo cookie this is a double stuffed oreo cookie but the regular oreo cookie works just as well um, double stuff is what i had so that's what we're using form it into a ball and just try to keep the Oreo cookie flat as you add it at the toppings. Um, you'll understand what I mean as you do this. Dip it into your bowl of toppings and then add it to your lined cookie sheet. You continue doing that until all of your batter is done. I believe I ended up with about 18 cookies um, because of this four ounce um, cookie scoop. So of course, if you use like a two ounce cookie scoop, you're gonna get twice as many and so forth and so on. But I, I intentionally wanted an oversized cookie. So I'm using that four ounce, 
four ounce cookie scoop. Roll it into a ball, dip it into your toppings, put it on your parchment paper. Repeat until you're done. I'll show you a few more and then I will skip ahead until the end. Don't forget to press it in just a little bit. Press your toppings in just a little bit to the top of your cookie balls. When we're done with this, uh, all of these cookie balls are gonna go into the refrigerator. You wanna try for up to about two hours in the refrigerator. You can actually do it overnight as well in the refrigerator, but you wanna at least get a, at least get an hour or two in the refrigerator before you bake. That'll help keep your cookie dough from spreading so far. Keep your cookies nice and round. In a ball, into the toppings, press them in, onto the parchment paper. Then repeat. Okay. This is where I'm going to skip ahead and finish all of the rest off camera. And we're going to come back when I get down to the last bit of my batter. So I got down to the last bit of my batter and I had too much for one cookie, but not enough for um, a whole one cookie so too much for too much for one cookie not enough for two cookies so i sort of split the difference and that's why i'm just wrapping the oreo into the bit of batter that i had it was still enough to stretch over and fill cover the whole thing so i did that for about two cookies so i have um, several large cookies and two small cookies all right i'll take all of that to the side and like i said you're going to want to put this now into the refrigerator for one to two hours even up to overnight if you wanted to in the refrigerator they go until time for baking. When it's time to bake, you want to make sure that you leave lots of room between each one. I use two full sheet pans into the oven, 350 degrees for 12 to 15 minutes. And when they're done, you have these beautiful, yummy, large Oreo filled chocolate chip pecan cookies. Enjoy. <laughs> 